We have troubling data unfolding this week across the housing market, data that's sending alarm bells that the marketplaces across the country in states like Texas, Tennessee, and Florida, those that have been long considered the bellwether, the most sturdiest of all markets, particularly due to the fact that those particular markets going back to 2016, year after year, consistently hold some of the highest inbound migration. And at the same time, folks, going back over a seven, eight year span of time, we see a consistent outbound migration from places like California, New Jersey, New York. And folks, I'm going to show you some crazy troubling statistics that are happening and unraveling in the market right now that's showing that much of that inbound migration is starting to reverse. And as many of these folks move back to where they came from, there is a deluge of inventory in many states that are already up to their neck in property, resulting in high price drops in particular markets. And you have to understand, folks, the volume of people moving back out of these states into the Northeast and into the Western states is going to have implications in those areas as well. As I unfold the research in the top stories today, jump down below and smash the like button if you appreciate the content. Let's get into the news. Ask not what the Great Reset can do for you. Ask what you can do for the Great Reset. Folks, publications like Business Insider has been keeping a close pulse onto the litany of layoffs that have been going on through the latter half of 2023 and into 2024. And they have been sounding major, major alarm bells that those that are in remote capacity, I mean, they're working from home in places like Florida and Texas and Ohio, all of these states that took in so much of the inbound population from outer states like California, and New York, you remember this whole arbitrage idea that took place just three short years ago and it is unfolding fast and data shows that a lot of those houses are hitting the market. But take a look at the story. It looks like remote workers are getting the boot again. The article goes into the fact that Wayfair, an e-commerce firm, and if you know who this is, is like many other tech giants laying off a chunk of its workforce. 13% of its workforce announced to be laid off. The CEO says working long hours, being responsive, there's not a lot of history of laziness being rewarded. They go on to say that a lot of this restructuring, the layoffs, were to establish a new and healthy foundation for growth. This particular CEO at Wayfair goes on to mention that the targeting of remote workers is there because there's just a concern for the lack of quality of the work, attention to detail, how involved in the day-to-day -day environment are they, and just a larger question that is it great for people inside of a company to be disparate and work from all different places of the country for that particular business. And Wayfair is not the only company not only laying off, but minimum pressuring those that are out of the office to get back in. A recent story by MarketWatch said, Bank of America Letter of Education puts teeth in the return to office mandate. Source says vast majority of bank workers come into the office three to five days a week, but those who don't are being warned that they may not be around too long if they do not start showing up to the office. The article goes on to say that the letter gives workers two weeks from the date of notification to comply or face further disciplinary action. The bank tells employees that the letter will also be included in their personnel file. Now, people online had plenty to say about this. They said, Letter of Education? Now that's a funny title. Reminds me of North Korea or China's repatriation training, read one anonymous comment. I swear some of the phrases around this place have to make you laugh at the utterly bizarre and the unnecessary. So folks, the push on remote workers demanding them back in the office is undeniable at this point. Look at this. Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon has demanded employees back in the office five days a week. Meta and Amazon also have threatened workers who refuse return to office mandates with poor performance reviews and termination. Folks, major CEOs across North America for a long time have been calling the warning that this is not the best way for workers. L'Oreal CEO here in this article had harsh words saying they lack attachment, passion, or creativity in their roles while he was speaking at the World Economic Forum in Davos. Last year, billionaire hedge fund manager and Citadel founder Ken Griffin said, the culture or social contract that holds people together in a company is unquestionably weaker in a work from home environment. And folks, if performance from a remote standpoint is a non-starter for many CEOs, you have to understand there's also articles online like this one that says three Americans share how they got away with secretly working with multiple employers as a remote worker. Essentially, they made hundreds of thousands of dollars annually by saying, I'm starting work 9 a.m., for instance, for employer A, employer B, and possibly employer C, for a work day and they're all paying the same person for the same single hour that they're reporting into work. Folks, think about what laying off is on its own. Laying off is a severance of relationships. We all see this in the movies portrayed when some 
poor middle manager gets a response from the board and they got to fire a few people. And the person that has to do the firing has to start chain smoking and drinking heavily in order to get through the day. These are the most saddest and summerest of times. And this is actually what we're seeing unfolding in our country right now across several industry sectors as unemployment ticks up even in the strongest of states like ours in Florida. But think about it, folks. You're a middle manager and you got to pick who goes. Are you going to pick Ron down the hall who's in a cubicle every day? You got to look eyes on and say, hey man, sorry, you can't stay any longer. Or are you going to fire Bill or Susie who may be sitting on the beach working for two or three different employers from the home they bought in Miami when all the U-Hauls were packing up and leaving New York or San Francisco where their employer currently resides. And folks, here's where we get to the heart of the issue for the housing market. You will remember in 2020, all of those stories, all of those social media posts where people would go to U-Haul and take video of people standing in a really long line in California, or you would see a street in Manhattan when there's 15 U-Hauls back to back onloading all the contents of people's homes as they were fleeing New York City. Folks, we know where the remote workers went, which folks adds further content why those states where all of these remote workers moved to, who are now possibly either losing their jobs or being forced back into the cities from which they came, we now have a little bit of context to why those same states have some of the highest levels of inventory and what may be the starting story of 2024 where many, many more of these people which were pushed into migration in these states, according to Redfin, one out of 10, you're talking a 10% slice of four to five million per year in home sales for a stretch of our time in history back in 20 and 21 at least where people moved in these states and are now moving back. And folks, things become very clear why particularly places like Tennessee, Texas, and Florida are now burgeoning in inventory, holding much more inventory versus their historical average than the rest of the 50 states. Allow me to show you real quick what has unfolded and what will likely unfold for those of you in New York, New Jersey, California. Many of these locations where undoubtedly some of this migration or a good chunk of it is now reversing in real time. At NestShare, we list your home for just 3%, saving you $25,000 on the sale of your property. You can trust NestShare to sell your home right and pass the savings on to you. Visit nestshare.com before you list your next home and don't let anybody you know sell before talking to us. Here's a headline to remember back in 2021. The states Americans headed to the most, according to U-Haul. The article goes on to say up here at the top, in 2020, Tennessee claimed the top spot for the most one-way U-Haul arrivals versus departures for the first time ever. Arrivals accounted for 51% of all one-way U-Haul traffic in Tennessee, according to U-Haul, a 12% increase over last year. Surprise, Florida came in first in 2019, but was third in 2020. Texas, which ranked the top two states with the most one-way arrivals since 2015, found itself in number two in 2020. And folks, check this out. California ranks last on 2020's list behind Illinois, New Jersey as the states with the least one-way arrivals. California has been in the bottom three states since 2016, and Illinois has been the bottom two since 2015, when U-Haul began ranking the states. Flashing the top 10 here on the screen, you can see the South even did well, including here at the bottom, 8th, 9th, and 10th. You have probably folks moving to Vegas. 9th is North Carolina and Georgia. Folks, let me give you the background of how this is really going to play out in real time and how this is going to affect you, no matter where you live in the country. The number one factor we have to consider is that we have unaffordability in home purchasing at an all-time high. Let's lay the backdrop of all this. In America, for most of the 50 states, prices are coming off of an all-time high. At the same time, interest rates are also making it anywhere from 30 to 50% more in cost per month to buy a house over leasing one. Now you lay the next piece of this, which is what does the future hold for 2024? Well, at this point in time, we're seeing a lot of layoffs announced. UPS just came out this week and announced 12,000 people gone because revenues are so anemic, they need to find a profit. They are going to FedEx because FedEx laid off 29,000 people about six months prior to that. And they aren't going to Amazon because they laid off thousands of people and they're on a hiring freeze. And at the end of the day, what that tells us is if they need fewer people to move around the crap we buy, we're buying less crap. To put it another way, we're spending way less into this year than last. But the real point in losing 12,000 people at UPS these people made between $35 and $50 an hour. They also get gobs of overtime depending on what time of year it is. Many of these folks have no problem making $80 to $120,000 a year. 
These are good jobs that are gone and they don't have the next company over to duplicate their wages. I know guys that work for UPS and FedEx. Many of them are not college educated. They made some of the best money that they'll ever make in those particular positions. And in all likelihood, they're going to take a step down and earn a lot less. Add to that all of the many thousands and thousands of people that move to states like Texas, Florida, Tennessee. Add to that the story that we now have unfolding, which is the target on the backs of many thousands of these remote workers that moved into all these states. You got to understand, folks, they sold high priced real estate liquidated it, paid over appraised value to lock in something in the Sunshine State, for instance, and now that property has to go back on the market or they lose their job and possibly take one that pays far less. But Jared, maybe they'll rent it out. Yeah, but rents are falling. And as I just said, rents are 30 to 50% less than the cost of ownership at current levels. Well, maybe they have a low interest rate from two or three years ago. Maybe they do. But if you're in the state of Florida, you're facing a whole lot other higher cost than just that. You have a lot of investors, particularly in Sunshine State, dumping real estate because property tax bills are shooting up, homeowners associations aren't getting any cheaper, and of course our property insurance is a long way from falling and we're obviously the most expensive state in the union where you could spend $1,000 a month just insuring your house. It's no surprise why we're closing on a record number of apartments in the state of Florida and then throughout many of these other states because we're gonna have a huge society of apartment dwellers because investors will not be able to afford to rent a single family to a tenant and a tenant's only option is gonna be an apartment. And the same thing goes for these people who have to migrate back to New York City or migrate back to San Francisco. Whatever the house was that they unloaded back then probably cost 30, 40, 50% more to get into and purchase at today's price. Folks, the top three most migrated into states for remote workers and those that were just fleeing places like New York and California, those states have the highest jumps in current inventory as we come in 2024. And I'm talking major shifts, much, much higher than the rest of the country. You have Florida at number one with 27% increase. That is huge, folks. And we also, again, have one of the highest amount of price cuts in the country because of that inventory growth. You have a similar story in Texas and Tennessee is at number 11. Folks, the crazy thing here, you got to think about this. These particular states don't usually have inventory problems. Texas, Tennessee, and Florida are the states that have historic, now you're talking eight to 10 years of history, people are flooding in. So there's commonly not a situation where we're leading all other 50 states in terms of how much supply is on the market. And this is a problem, particularly in the face of a year where we're heading off where things are getting weaker. And at the same time, folks, you have Jerome Powell looking at all the data. The central banker, the arbiter of all interest rates is saying, forget about a pivot. These rates are staying high. There is no recession. There is no fire. And things aren't collapsing fast enough for his liking to say that, hey, we can sustain inflation from here. And folks, I'm telling you, the recession will have to go deeper than it is now before the marketplace writes itself. A lot of folks are sitting by the sidelines thinking that one day interest rates are gonna drop and housing is gonna get more expensive from here and that is not logical. There is no place in reality where people whose wages are so far behind how expensive it is to buy in most markets of the country where it's seven to 10 times person's earnings to buy a house. It's untenable, it's so flipped, it's so much cheaper to rent. Case example, in 2016, it was over 30% cheaper for you to buy a house than to rent one. The cost to rent is always, always the marker for what it costs to buy a house. When renting is far cheaper, that is a sign that either your interest rates have to really fall severely or your house prices are coming down. Which do you think it is? We just had an FOMC meeting, Powell said, higher for longer, forget it. And everybody's sitting here. We make all this news like we're anywhere near our interest rates and our 30-year fixed mortgages from coming down from around 7 or 8%. And we already know, folks, buyers can't afford it. Ceilings have been met. The peak has been here and it's tipping. Prices are changing throughout the country. Are they massively off? No, but we're early in a long market cycle. But the reality is this, folks. You've got a lot of people who are going to turn around out of Tennessee, they're gonna turn around out of Florida and Texas, and they're gonna go back to where they came from. And the sad thing is, folks, those people that are coming back to California, New Jersey, 
a lot of those people owned when they left and they are not owning when they go back if they want to keep their job. So folks, bottom line, what can we expect in 2024 based on the pattern of where we're starting? More layoffs, higher for longer on interest rates. Number three, more buyers this year than ever are gonna weigh what it costs to rent versus what it costs to own. And they're gonna say the natural thing to themselves is the value of this house looking really good in the next year or is it looking really bad? If I buy it, am I gaining equity or am I losing equity? Investors which disappeared in 2023 aren't back in 2024. And rents are going to continue to fall. Even in the hottest areas of the country, rents are gonna fall and that's gonna make it even harder for the housing market, which folks, I do not see any other way that price is in any good condition from here. And I think Realtor.com's economist called it accurately that there will be a US-wide fall in price in 2024 with many of these markets, particularly the ones that are seeing a much higher inventory level at this point, are going to see price affecting them the most. And yes, I know there's many of you in Connecticut and Massachusetts and New Hampshire, these areas, you have no idea what I'm talking about. You got five houses for sale and as soon as it goes up, it comes back down and your price has gone up 15% in the last year, but you aren't stoked by these same pressures. You didn't have investor buffoonery. You didn't have people running to your state saying, I wanna be here and work as a remote worker under the snow. I get it, it's not you, I understand that. But I'm telling you, the South and some parts of the Midwest is gonna be a different story, folks. And I said all that to say this, in a market like we're gonna see in 2024, keeping your equity is most important when you sell your home. Listing your home at the traditional commission cost at five and 6% makes no sense. Visit nestshare.com and list your home for just 3% total, where you can sell your home and keep your hard-earned equity. If you didn't know, it's everywhere in the news that the old way of charging commission is changing in real time and you can and should join the evolution in listing your home, full service, high definition photography at your side from beginning to end. List your home for 3% total. Don't list with anyone until you visit nestshare.com. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you on the next one.